Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, Steady with Danny. My name is Daniel Lottery and I'm excited to have you here. If you are new here, kindly subscribe to the channel and click on the post notification bell icon so that you don't miss any new video. From the title, I guess you already know what this video is about, so let's get right into it. The objectives of today's tutorial are to recap on what we did on our previous video which can be found on our YouTube channel, count missing data using a simple for loop code, visualize missing data. In this way we will plot the data and identify the areas where we have data in abundance and areas where we do not have data. In terms of reservoir characterization, areas where we have data will be our reservoir interval. We also learn how to drop missing data. In this way, we are going to drop rows with missing data. And then we also learn how to drop unnecessary columns. That is columns that we will not use in our machine learning process. And finally, we will visualize our well logs, just like it's done in Petrol, TechLog and other plotting softwares. So let us recap on what we did in our previous tutorial, which can be found on our YouTube video. So in our previous tutorial, we installed the library called Lasio using the pip install command. We also imported Lasio and then we imported some relevant libraries like NumPy, Pandas and all that. We also learned how to get the file name from our computers by using a shift and right click on the mouse. We also imported a dot last file into Jupyter notebook. Okay. And then we learned how to count and view our curves. When I say curves, I mean our Y line logs, which is the gamma ray, neutron density, and all that. We also learned how to convert the last file into a data frame. And finally, we learned how to combine or join or concatenate two different data frames now have to visualize and evaluate the data frame for missing data so you can pause this video and type in this code great so this code is going to count the number of missing data that we have so when you get true it means missing data false means we have data there okay so for this column we have 24,000 and above missing data and we have 19,000 non missing data and you can see the same for all of them every column has different missing data count so you see this one has 24,056 this one has 24,050 okay you can see for the output you see a lot of missing data 41,734 and you have 1,999 non-missing data. So what we will do is we will now visualize the missing data and see where it is. Usually for wireline logs, it is within the reservoir section that the output is calculated for. So before you go into petrol and all that, you can use this to know which depth your reservoir is. Not the actual reservoir, but you know the interval that your reservoir is. So we are going to run this code Yes, it's a lot of code, so just take your time and type it in. You can pause the video if you have to, okay? And it depends on the number of columns that you have. We have 29 columns, okay? That's why it's a lot, right? And in order for us not to type a lot, we also use the for loop. That will help us to count and plot for all the 29 columns. So you can pause the video and then type in this column. So you start from this point and then you end here. I'm not going to take you through all of them, but as we go through lots of tutorials, you'll be able to understand all this. So PLT is what? Matplotlib, right? Okay. So we are using that one. Then we have to run the code to visualize where our missing data is. Great, so we can see our missing data. And for this, the red means missing data. 
but then gray means you have data available okay so as we can see there are lots of missing data here because usually well locks um, don't start from the sea floor for bit size yes it will start from the sea floor but most of the logs do not start from the sea floor so let's scroll to where the output is So this is the output, okay? And we can see that there are lots of missing data except for this interval, okay? So then you would know that this is where your reservoir of interest or your interval of interest is, right? And we can see that it is around the 4,000 mark, 4,300 there about, right? So what do we do when we locate our missing data? The next thing to do is to delete your missing data. If you don't want to delete, there's another way to interpolate or repopulate the missing data. But for us, our reservoir has data. So we just want to drop all the intervals that do not have data. So this is the code. We use the name of the world log dot drop NA. So it means drop NAN. So you just type in this, this code, you run it. And you end up dropping so you can if you remember the first depth was starting from 188 but this time you're starting from form 4335 okay that means all the intervals that do not have data like all the rules that do not have data has been deleted okay and now what we are going to do again is to delete columns that we do not need so if you think you need all your columns, do not delete anything. But if you think there are some columns that are ir irrelevant to what you want to do, then you can actually go ahead and delete them like bit size. If you don't need it, you can delete it. Okay, these columns came from the service company, so I don't need them, so I'm deleting them. So you have to use this code, the name of the well, dot drop, comma, box brackets, then you type in the column names then you visualize it so we reduce it from 29 to about probably 14 15 yeah and you can also use this code to check on your data types and we have floats throughout so you can also google float to understand what float means in terms of machine learning or data science and but basically float means any number with a decimal so another interesting thing that I would like to show you is how to visualize your well logs just like you do in Petrel, TechLog or these other softwares. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to reset my index. So I'm going to move the depth column. What I mean by I'm going to move the depth column is I'm going to move this depth column to join this so that this will be replaced by continuous numbers starting from zero. Okay, so you use this code. You put in your raw name so the raw name dot reset underscore index and then I'm going to visualize the first 15 rows okay so this is it showing you our first 15 rows right and now I'm going to plot the raw log so I know it's a lot of code but you can pause the video and type in the code also, do not worry, I'll leave it in my GitHub repository so you can just go in, download it and copy and paste it. So in putting in your code, you have to make sure that these columns matches with yours. The name of my gamma ray column was GR, so you have to check that it matches with yours. Okay, then my medium resistivity is RPCELM, so you have to check to see if it matches with yours as well. So. You can pause the video and type in the code if you want. Again, I used a for loop to prevent me from typing a lot of these unnecessary data as well. So the for loop is also helpful and I'll do a video on this later. Right, so we just have to click shift enter. Sorry, before we, we um, visualize our well log, you can save it so that you can just download it into your 
PowerPoint or your Word document or your report or whatever. So in order to save it, this is the code to save it. So this is how you save it. This is the format. You can change the format if you want, but I am saving it as JPEG. You can also change the density per inch, increase it wherever you want. Okay. So what you need to do is to type in fig dot save file and then type in the rest. Okay. So press shift enter to take a few seconds. And this is how your real log will look like. And from our basic geology, this is the red one is our density, right? And the blue one is our neutron log. So the crossover point will tell you where our hydrocarbons are. Right? And this corresponds to low gamma ray, which signifies sandstones. Okay. And then we can see this interval and correspond it to the porosity log to see it has high porosity. So the porosity is above 15 percent so this interval is actually showing us high porosity maybe about 20 22 percent okay so that is it in using jupyter notebook using the lasio library to import your well logs and also to visualize them now this brings us to the end of this two-part tutorial before we can end the part two of this tutorial let us go over the objectives and see if we were able to achieve all of them so the first one was using a for loop to count missing data and the second objective was plotting the missing data to help us identify the interval of interest in this case being our reservoir interval we also learned how to drop missing data i.e rows with missing data and then we also learned how to drop unnecessary columns that is columns that we will not use further in our machine learning process or maybe we think these columns are duplicates okay, and finally we learned how to plot y-line logs using a simplified code you may not think it's simplified but once we end our machine learning journey you realize that this is actually simple and we can all do this Thank you very much for staying with me up to the end of this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. If you have any question or topic that you like help with in learning, leave it down in the comment section and I'll try my best to attend to it. Click on the post notification bell icon so that you'll be alerted whenever a new video is uploaded. Here at Steady with Danny, we teach in order to learn and we learn in order to teach. Stay safe. Bye-bye.